Hello again, this is World Pastor Tony Alamo. This is program number 765. If you'd like to have a copy of it, Sharon will tell you how at the end of the program. Just let us know whether you want a CD or an audio tape. They're free, including the postage and handling. I've got a continuation of the book of Revelation. I'm in chapter 11 now, so you can get your Bibles all set. I've got some songs and letters. But right now, let's pray, Father that you will anoint me, that whatever it is that you want said in this message today, that it will be, that you will pipe it through me. I know that there were like a couple of golden pipes that were pulling things out of me up to the throne, and then there was another pipe coming down into me that was showing me, it seemed like millions of answers of questions. And after that happened, even though I was a young Christian, I had confidence I was enlightened as never before in my entire life. Lord, I pray that you will heal the sick, that you will raise people from the dead. Everyone in the world is dead in their sins and trespasses. Lord, I pray that you'll raise them from the dead on this broadcast, that you'll use me in a very special, supernatural way to cause this to come about. Rebuke Satan. Bless us. In Jesus' name, I pray that souls may be saved and the church given power over the beast. In Jesus' name, I pray, and everyone says amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's get into chapter 11 here. Verse 3, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. So that means they're fasting. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Well, the God of the earth is the devil. So I'm going to show you where these two are mentioned in the Old Testament. So we turn to the book of Zechariah so that I can show you that unless you know the Old Testament, you can't really know and understand the New Testament. So we're in the fourth chapter of Zechariah. First one says, And the angel that talked with me came again and awakened me as a man that is woken up out of his sleep. Verse 2, And said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, a real church, a church that preaches the entire word of God the way it really is, a candlestick, all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it. That's filled, the bowl. And his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. Well, as as I said, when the Lord was showing me my wife, I couldn't hardly believe that this was God telling me to get married to her because I was just a new Christian. And I said, she's smarter than I am. And this pipe that went up to him, It's a golden pipe, says, it's the truthfulness from my heart. I'm too young in the Lord, and she's smarter than I am. He answered back in another golden pipe, this is good for your ego. And then more questions came out of my heart, and they were coming out so fast, it was like a stream of questions, maybe millions of questions, and they were coming back, the answers so fast into me, through the other golden pipe, into my spirit, that I couldn't tell what the answers were or anything they were coming, and it just seemed that I knew all these things. I felt comfortable that I was knowledgeable and had wisdom, but the Lord said in the last days he'd do a quick work, and so he did that with me. It would ordinarily take me forever to learn the things that he told me in just a short period of time. And here I was a young baby Christian. Verse 3, And two olive trees by it. And in the book of Revelation, he says, and these are my two olive trees, by these golden pipes and the bowl, the golden bowl. One is upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. Verse 4, so I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, what are these, my lord? What are these two olive trees and this bowl? Verse 5, Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. So the angel of the Lord wants people to know. And I said, No, I don't know these things, my Lord. Verse 6, 
Then he answered and spake unto me, explaining what they were saying. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by how strong you are, you work out with the weights and you practice basketball, football, baseball, and boxing, you know, not by that kind of thing, nor by power, by man's legs, or you can throw the javelin, or oh, you really good chunk of dirt. But by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, well, it's hard for you to grasp that because your ego, your arrogance, your pride, your blasphemies are so embedded into you. You know how to sow good, don't you? Oh, you're so full of pride. And this is what the Lord saith, the Lord of hosts. Verse 7, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. You got a big nation there, you're so full of pride. And blasphemy, going to get leveled. And he shall bring forth the headstone, which is Jesus. He's the cornerstone, the headstone of the entire body of Christ. There with shoutings, crying, power, power unto it, power unto the Lamb, unto God. Not you weasels out there, you're nothing. You're going to die, these presidents, these kings, that do anything to get a position to where people can admire them and blow more smoke into them than uh, should be. Verse 8, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Verse 9, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. We're talking about the house of the Lord. Those that believe like Zerubbabel, those that believe like every Christian, those that believe in Jesus. Now, verse 10, For who hath despised the day of small things? Well, we won't want to know about small things. We're gods. We know everything. We're full of pride and blasphemy. Who hath despised the day of small things? All these smart alecks. For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, the seven spirits, the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Verse 11. Then answered I and said unto him, I don't know, Lord, what are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? These two olive trees, these two people of God, that are on the left and right hand side of the church. Verse 12. And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches, or trees, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? Well, because they received from heaven the things, the golden oil, the Holy Spirit, and they empty themselves out. They teach people in the world the things which the Holy Spirit have taught them. Verse 13, And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord, it's a mystery to me. <laughs> Verse 14, Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. So one time it was the Christmas day. And this Tyrus St. Clair, the one that fell behind the jukebox and saw a vision of hell, we are very nice apartments, Sue and I had. And I answered the phone, and it was her, and she said, Tony, 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 forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. And I says, for what? She said, because I'm jealous of you and Susie. I don't have a husband, and I was so jealous of you, and you're happy, and it's Christmas time, and I saw you downtown buying gifts for people, and, and you look so happy, and I'm jealous, and... I said, well, how come you're telling me all these things? And she said, well, because, and she was so petrified. And she says, I saw the Lord when my eyes were wide open, she had a huge golden altar come into my apartment. She lived in a very slummy area of Los Angeles. She had a place, and it was nice, and she was living in there with a midget, and he was blind, legally blind. And she says, the Lord put an altar 
a big golden altar down in front of me, and you were standing on one side, and you were all in gold, and Susie was standing on the other side, and he said, These are my two witnesses, and you are a babbling fool. And she says, the Lord has frightened me so much that I had to call you and ask for forgiveness. Do you forgive me? And I said, yeah. I said, okay, now let me talk to Sue. So I covered the mouthpiece up and I said, Tyra just saw a vision from the Lord and wants to talk to you about it. So she said, yes, I forgive you, Tyra. I could hear her saying the same thing to her. And Sue was not full of pride. And either am I. I didn't even want to be a preacher or a teacher or anything. I thought the Lord called me to bring money into the church and to exalt Susie because I knew she knew the Bible a lot more than I did. And before Susie died, she told me that the Lord told me that I'm going to die and I'm going to be gone for quite a long time, quite some time. And she says, and then when people least expect it, God's going to raise me from the dead and you and I are going to be the two witnesses. And we were told this by other people. Another person stated they saw a vision, and I was sitting in a chair, and Susie was standing behind me with her hands on my shoulders. And she says, Know you not that this is Enoch? And she says, that I went to Sue after I saw this vision, and I went up to her and said, Do you know that Tony is actually Enoch, or the spirit of Enoch is in him? Because Enoch has to come back and die. Because it's appointed unto every man to die, and after death comes the judgment. So Enoch and his wife are the two witnesses. This is what I got out of it. And then I asked the Lord, with all this, I said, Lord, the sky was just filled full of clouds. I said, Lord, if we are the two witnesses, make those clouds disappear, and they immediately vanished right from us. So there's a lot of different signs I don't have time to go into because... To me, I could care less if I was one of the two witnesses because they really have a rough road to hoe. <laughs> they, they don't have an easy life, you know. And many times I just wish that I was a person that was just a regular Christian, one that believes and then just goes through life and then dies and then you're up in heaven. So verse 4, this is Revelation, now chapter 11. These two witnesses... These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Why does the Lord call it the God of the earth? Because everybody worships him like God, the devil. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, which means the fiery word of God, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So... Many times, uh, it's innumerable, I can't even count them all, people have risen up against us, and I pray to the Lord and say, Lord, stop them, save their souls so they know who we are. And all of a sudden, Mr. Metters, who had Metters Motel in Alma, Arkansas, got cancer in his eyes. He was passing out false articles on us. And Susie had cancer, and I had bad eyes, and so the Lord gave him cancer in the eyes. And the same thing happened with the judge that came against Susie and wanted her body that was in a coma to come out of the hospital, Oral Roberts Hospital in Tulsa, and to be taken into a courtroom to testify, and she, could, she died the next day. Finally, Dr. Hope from Oral Roberts Hospital convinced this wicked judge there were two real tall marshals that came in with their boots on and all their regalia to pull Susie's bed out. And Dr. Hogue he interceded, called the judge, and said she can't even live through the night. And finally the judge said, okay, well, we'll wait a couple more days. And she did die April the 8th in 1982. That's when this happened. Well, this judge caught cancer and died. And I called him up and I said, look, I understand you have cancer. If you need anything, just let me know, and I can send some of our men over there to run errands for you or whatever. And he says, no, Tony, you know, I'm not going to die. I have my church. You have yours and all. And so he, the Lord killed him. So uh, if any man, or of course that means any human, will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth, I pray to God and 
devoureth their enemies, and the Lord will devour you. And it's been proven many times. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Verse 6. These have power to shut heaven. And I've demonstrated that I do have that power from God. This is extraordinary power. That it reign not in the days of their prophecy. And have power over waters. To turn them into blood. And to smite the earth with all plagues. Every kind of plague that there is. As often as they will. Well, why would we want to cause plagues on the earth? Because if a city has turned against us, like Nashville, Tennessee, and the government is, uh, where the IRS was in that city, well, then God is going to pour out plagues on them. But I'm glad there's so many things to tell about that. Verse 7, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast, this arrogant bastard, this modern-day Nebuchadnezzar, the Antichrist, that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit, shall make war against them, and shall actually overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall be in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. It's spiritually called that, but it's not really. But it is more reality than the actual carnal, where also our Lord was crucified. Well, the Lord was crucified here on earth and by the same demonic spirit. But Satan tripped himself up on that one because Christ came to die. And if he would have come down from the cross, there wouldn't be any salvation for any of us. So that worked out very well. Verse 9, And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. They want to see them deteriorate before their eyes. They hate them so much. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, over their dead bodies, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another. They make a big holiday out of this, because these two prophets of the Lord tormented them that dwell on earth. We tell people, you have to be perfect to get into heaven. You can't get into heaven. You're going to hell in the lake of fire. That just torments them. And it torments them that we tell them that all you have is ego. It's a fairy tale. You believe in Porky the Pig and uh, cartoons, and you think of yourself as more than you are. You're nothing. That they don't like. Verse 11, And after three days and a half, the spirit of life, the Holy Spirit of life from God, entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. And everybody in the world sees it because it's being seen on television. Verse 12, And they heard a great voice from heaven, saying unto them, Come up hither! And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. They saw these two witnesses go up into heaven just as Jesus did in a cloud. They rose from the dead. And that this is to prove to people that, of course, Jesus, God come in the flesh, rose from the dead and was ascended into heaven. Now, all the people in the world will see this so that they don't think it's a fairy tale anymore. It's not some cleverly devised fable. They're going to see it all. They're going to behold these two witnesses entering into heaven. Verse 13. At the same hour was there a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven, and also the God of these two witnesses, these two golden candlesticks, these two golden pipes, that they talk through the pipes to the Lord, and the Lord talks down through the pipes unto them. Not you, not you basketball player, typist, lackey. Not you lackeys, but to these two. All those that don't observe God or give honor to him, you're lackeys, you're nothing, you stink. And you putos, you putos, you homosexuals and lesbians, maybe some of you will be frightened enough to repent. Who knows? I doubt it. We're out of time at this moment. We'll take this up tomorrow.
I'm going to read some letters now. So where's the first letter from? Kenya, Africa. We are very grateful for the Lord's gracious work by his faithful servant, Tony Alamo, who is of great blessings and encouragement to us in the Lord. We've shared the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ with the lost people who are captive to various yokes of bondage by your literature, Dry Bones, which not only delivered many souls from these yokes, but as well brought them to the light of the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Messiah. We run a street boys program, Gamongo Rehabilitation Center, which reaches out unto the hardened hearts of the young people ostracized by the society from diverse addictions. Currently, our center houses 28 such young people who have received the message of God's great love unto them, the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Bibles are urgently needed. The center's main objective is to train these young people, reforming them by the power of God's love to live unto his glory, besides offering them basic courses, tailoring, carpentry, sculpting, and painting to prepare them responsible and self-reliant people in life. But unfortunately, the greatest setback confronting us is the lack of Bibles. In fact, currently we use a very old, worn-out Gideon's version, the only one available. Beloved, it's in this respect we hereby do appeal for your urgent intervention that in the gesture of Christian love, you consider assisting us to acquire some Bibles. Thanks, Pastor H. Hakoni from Elder at Kenya, Africa. All right, now do we have a um, short one? From Ondo State, Nigeria. Dear Evangelist Alamo, I listened to your powerful message on Radio Africa, and it really helped me a lot in my conversion. Please send me one holy Bible and literature. May God bless you always. Yours sincerely, Sola from Ondo State, Nigeria. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, it's time for you to be united to this God, the God of heaven, the God of heaven and earth, the God of everything. He's even the God over Satan because he said, if you do what I say, you'll go to heaven. If you don't do what I say, you go to hell. So whichever way you do, it's God's way. He lets you decide where you're going to spend eternity. He said, accept me and you go to heaven. Reject me. And if you say, well, I'm not going to do it right now, you've rejected him. Don't reject the Lord. He's the one that wants to see that you're in the kingdom of heaven and not tormented like these people that are going to be tormented on earth and in hell and the lake of fire forever. So say this prayer so that you can be united with the Lord. Say to him, My Lord and my God, have mercy upon my soul, a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, and I believe that he died on the cross and shed his precious blood for the forgiveness of all my former filthy sins. And I believe that you, Father, raised Jesus from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. I open the door of my heart, and I invite you into my heart, Lord Jesus, Holy Father, the Holy Spirit. Jesus, wash all my former filthy sins away in the precious blood that you shed for me on the cross at Calvary. You will not turn me away, Lord Jesus. You will save my soul. I know because your word says so. You value your word higher than your name. And so, therefore, I trust your word. And I love your word. Therefore, I know you've heard me and you've answered me. And I know I'm saved. And therefore, I just praise and thank you, Lord. Raise your hands up and praise and thank the Lord for saving your eternal soul. And Sharon, tell everyone how to receive a copy of this program, number 765. Go to alamuministries.com. Email us at taoffice at alamuministries.com or write to Tony Alamo Christian Ministries, P.O. Box 2948, Hollywood, California, 90078. Or call area code 661-252-5686. That's 661-252-5686. All right, I'm World Pastor Tony Alamo. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for another extension of this message, the book of Revelation. You know, we people here on earth are letting a lot of days slip by. Any day that you don't serve the Lord, you've let that day slip by. And millions of souls may be lost by you not working in the Spirit every day. Here I am to sing for you the days we let slip by. The days we let slip by forever never will return like robins in the 
springtime When a day has come and gone It is then a part of eternity and time The days we let slip by forever While we're putting off what we can do tomorrow stands before us then we'll fully be aware how much we should have cared. 